Easter, everyone! Christ is risen! Christ is risen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, for this glorious day, this glorious time to celebrate our Savior's birth. May it fill our hearts so that we can fill the world with your love and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you may be wondering why. <laughs> well, for those of us who tend to come here, you're thinking, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> for our guests, you're wondering, this guy must be nuts. And our members would say, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I have been doing this now for 23 years. And I have been at Pisgah for seven of those 23 years. A and so it's the same story, basically, year after year after year after year. And so I'm thinking, I want to make it special. i got to figure out something different to do because, you know, it needs to be memorable. I mean, seriously, how many of you remember my sermon from last Easter? No, don't answer that. Um, no, you can't, because the truth is, I don't remember my sermon from last Easter. They all kind of run together. And so I'm thinking, all right, what can I do this year that would make them remember? <laughs> Nailed it, didn't I? Yes. But I cannot preach like this. Um, so, oh, my glasses did come off. Thank you. I wondered why y'all got all blurry. Um, but the truth is, it, I really did want this to be memorable because I know that when unexpected things happen, they produce memories, right? We remember them. I mean, think about it. When's the last time that you were surprised about something? Think about birthdays, all right? All your birthdays kind of run together, don't they? Unless there's like a surprise party. You remember those, right? Or, or a special gift that, that you have been wanting that you'll treasure forever. Those kinds of things make it memorable. And the reason for that is scientists have, have discovered that when things are tied to our emotions, they tend to get etched in our brains because the neurons start, start flooding. The stronger the emotion, the stronger the memory. And while the memories are there, the emotions are different, especially when dealing with unexpected things. I mean, for example, what I was going for here was that you would be joyfully jolted. I hope it worked. Because I'm guessing that when you see Santa, you're generally not upset. So, joyful. Although... You may, on the other hand, be thinking, why in the world is this guy wearing Santa suit on Easter? That would be angrily annoyed. Um, that happens sometimes too, right? Uh, when, when you're surprised. Same thing. If, if it's your birthday and you've been wanting a gift, this particular gift forever, and then you don't get it or you get something else, you're angry. You're annoyed. Of course, there, there are the other reactions that come from unexpected things. Um, fully fearful. Because if something jumps out at you, or something happens that you totally don't think is going to happen, our first reaction is often fear. But then, then you also have sorrowfully shattered. When the unexpected happens... And after you have deciphered what it means, you're left absolutely crushed. Sort of like when you realized I showed up here in Santa suit. Or, for instance, 9-11. Or, for some of you, when Kennedy was assassinated. Because of the emotions that are tied with that, you know exactly when, where, and what you were doing when it happened. Same if... You get a bad diagnosis or you find out that a loved one has passed away. Those emotions become embedded in us and make memories. 
So the reason I bring this up is because today's gospel reading, well, today in general, is all about the unexpected. Totally unexpected. Starts early in the morning. And God bless all of you people for being 10 o'clock people. Because I wish that this happened at 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, maybe, uh, wouldn't it be great an Easter sunset service instead of a sunrise? But at any rate, these ladies had to get up at the crack of dawn. And they went out to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And you know along the way they had to have been wondering what they were going to do when they got there, right? But they just wanted to see the tomb. And then as, as they approach, a huge earthquake comes. And the stone, the massive stone that was covering the grave entrance, rolled away. And the guards that had been posted there, because, you know, there was a rumor that the disciples might steal the body because there, there was talk, you know, that Jesus might be raised from the dead. And so they put guards there to make sure that wasn't going to happen. Well, needless to say, that was not the most expected occurrence to happen to these guards today. And they were fully frightened and stood there like dead men. And then appeared an angel. And the two Marys were standing there. And we know they were frightened too because what's the first thing the angel says? Well, it's the first thing angels always say. Do not be afraid. I guess you've heard it. Maybe it was another time I was wearing a Santa suit. Different time of the year. But that's what the angels say. Do not be afraid. And it makes sense because I don't know about you, but if an angel showed up and was talking to me, I would be pretty freaked out. And they were. But they said, do not be afraid. You're looking for Jesus, but he ain't here. He's been raised just like he said he would be. And then he said, now go and tell his disciples. And so so they left that place. And then Jesus appears. And comes to them and says, greetings. Once again, totally unexpected. But this time, it, 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 they're met with a very different reaction. Joy. They fall down and they worship him. The fear that they had been feeling was gone. And now they were overcome with joy because their Savior was alive. And they went from that place and they went and told the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. So here, in the midst of this short story, we see all of the emotions that are bottled up from this unexpected event. Because let's be honest, what could be more unexpected than someone being raised from the dead, right? I mean, yeah, Jesus said it was going to happen, but do you think they really thought it was? I mean, it did not say that the Marys were going to see if Jesus was raised from the dead. No, they were going to see the tomb. They were going there because they fully believed that that's where he was. Unexpected. Unbelievable. But I'm thinking that for those of us who are here today, which I guess would be all of us, um, it's not really unexpected that Jesus rose from the dead. Anybody surprised by hearing that this morning? If so, I'd love to chat with you. There's a whole Bible full of stories. This is the main one. You you picked us on the right day. But no, none of us are surprised. That's why we're here. That's why we're Christians. Because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Because he died on the cross to save us from our sins. And three days later, God raised him from the dead, giving us the promise of eternal life. That's why we're here. We've heard this story before, or at least the one in Mark or Luke or John. And they're all kind of the same. Few people are different, but they're the same, right? We're, this isn't unexpected. You're not, you're not going to go home today and go, man, I never realized that. Jesus was raised from the dead. No, this is not unexpected news for us. That's why all of the sermons run together. Because it's the same news year after year after year. But let me tell you, as, as I went through the text th- this year... Something did jump out at me. Something is unexpected about this. And it's the participants. In Matthew's gospel, we hear that it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. 
Now, a little bit of history on Mary Magdalene. There's, there's a lot of myths about her, like that she was a prostitute or that she was the woman caught in adultery. None of those are actually biblical. What we do know about Mary is this. Jesus healed her or exercised seven demons from her. Now, in the Bible, the number seven is a significant number. It always means complete, which means that Mary was really, really, really messed up. Her demons had completely taken over her life. They, they had impacted her body, her mind, her spirit, her emotions, everything about her, which means that they would have wrecked her physically, socially, economically. She would have been just shattered. And she was chosen to be one of the first witnesses of the resurrection. In fact, Mary Magdalene is the only one that was in all four Gospels as one of the first people to witness the resurrection. And who else was with her? The other Mary. How would you like to go down in history as the other Mary? <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm imagining Matthew writing this down. He's saying, hey, you remember who else was there? Yeah, it was the other Mary. <laughs> She's a no-name nobody. I mean, we got a whacked-out weirdo in Mary Magdalene over here, and we got a no-name nobody, the other Mary. That, I mean, you got Mary, mother of our Lord. You got Mary, wife of Clopas. You got Mary Magdalene, and then the other Mary. And she's not just known as the other Mary in this gospel either. There's always the other Mary. Didn't have a last name, didn't have anything. She's just the other Mary. Just a nobody. And what's craziest of all is that they were women. Because in that culture, women accounted for nothing. In a court of law, in order for a woman's testimony to count, it had to be corroborated by a man. And yet, here in Matthew's gospel, the only people who have seen the resurrected Lord at this point are women. That, my friends, is unexpected. That is unbelievable. Why would God choose a no-name nobody and a whacked-out weirdo to be their very first witnesses of the resurrection? To be the ones to go and tell. That's unbelievable. That is totally unexpected. And yet, that's what happened. And the truth is, you and I believe in the resurrection, right? We believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Otherwise, again, we wouldn't be here. And yet, in some ways, it's obviously harder for us to get our mind around the fact that God would use people like that to be witnesses to the greatest thing ever. Now we believe that Mary and Mary were there. Yeah. But total outsiders. Total weirdos. And you know what? God still uses weirdos like that today. I mean. There are some weird people in this world. You know. If you don't believe me. Go to Walmart. They're there. <laughs> and. You know what? God chooses people just like that to go and be witnesses to the world. And when I mean weird, I mean obviously people not like us, right? You know, people that don't look like us, people that don't talk like us, people that don't dress like us, people that don't share our same opinions, people that don't, don't vote the same way we vote, some, you know, they don't dress like we dress. They're different than we are. And, and so it, it's absolutely mind-blowing to us that God would use people like that to be witnesses to the resurrection. But you know what's even crazier? Is that God uses people like us. People like you and me. Because we may not be weird. You may not be weird. <laughs> but you have been given the gifts and talents that it takes to tell this world. To tell those weirdos out there, some of those who need to hear this good news. Because this is great news. Jesus Christ is alive. Our sins have been forgiven. And you know what? Because that tomb was empty, that means that nothing that happens in this world, 
Nothing is the end. Because he lives, we will live also. And so no matter who the president is, no matter what's going on in China, no matter what's happening in Ukraine, no no matter what's happening at work, no matter what's happening at home, no matter what's happening in your body, it doesn't matter because in the end we know that there is a promise of glory and life everlasting. On your best day, it's better than the worst day in eternity. So as bad as it may get in this life, and and sometimes it will... We always have that promise because the tomb was empty. Our hearts are not. And my friends, there's a lot of people out there that need to hear that. And unfortunately, we, we, tend, to, we, we tend to think of those, them as those people over there. People that are outcast. People that don't belong. People that certainly wouldn't be chosen to be at the tomb. And yet many of those are the ones who need to hear this good news most. Not one of rejection and judgment. Not why God doesn't love them. But that God does. And that God has a promise for them too. The world today sees us as very expected. And they often get what they expect. Judgment. Condemnation. Unacceptance. So maybe this Easter, we look at Mary Magdalene and, well, that other Mary, and realize that you and I are called to be unexpected too. That we are called to reach out to the people in this world that often get pushed aside and pushed away. That we're called to show the good news and share the love of God with everyone. And that means everyone because that's who Jesus came to save. The world expects us to be judgmental. Let's be the unexpected and show them love. The world expects us to not accept them. Let's, show, let's, be, un, let, let's be unbelievable and show them acceptance. Let's be the people God has created and called us to be. Because we are witnesses of the resurrection. The greatest event that has, the world has ever known. And you and I are called to share that good news. Go shock the world and be unbelievable. Amen.